joined by some people who are a part of this great discussion. Uh, first on my far left, we have Joe Artono, Commissioner at the English Montreal School Board. Hi. Welcome to the show, Joe. Thank great you. to have you here. Joanne Thank Chardon, you. Parent Commissioner at the English Montreal School Board. Welcome. And we have Michelle Pupor, Vice President of Parent Power in School Governance. Welcome. It's great to have you all here. Thank you. Let's just jump in with the first question. Joe, you oppose Bill 86. Describe to everybody at home why. What do you oppose about the bill? Um, well, there's many reasons, uh, uh, but the major reason is the fact that, uh, first of all, uh, I believe that this bill is unconstitutional. I believe that if this bill were to be challenged in the courts, uh, the Supreme Court would, would outright reject it and uh, invalidate the bill in its entirety. Uh, I believe that the bill is undemocratic when we compare the democratic way of electing commissioners now versus the way they would be elected in Bill 86. And I believe that um, uh, there's a misconception there when we talk about more power being given to the parents. I believe that this is uh, more power just being given to the minister because he is extending um, all of these different ways and in, in all of these different areas where he can override decisions made by council, decisions made by governing boards, decisions made by the administration and that he can basically just unilaterally make those decisions himself. And Michelle, you, you feel the opposite. You actually think the minister should have more power and you do believe that parents will have more involvement with Bill 86. Why? Yes, because it would officialize the structure. Uh, there would be more parents sitting at the council and also not just parents, school actors in a school. Those who know best what's happening in today's school would be si sitting in the council. And it, we think it would lead to a better interaction between school, school boards, and parents, and thus more conductive to students' uh, success, because they could be targeting the resources where it's needed, and they know where it's needed. And also, by having parents sitting on the, on the uh, school council, uh, principals, they would be elected by their peers. And they, right. these people would be accountable to their peers, not like now, it's commissioners, and we have parents commissioners, they're the ones who are accountable to the parents, but everybody sitting on the board would be accountable to their electorate. And now that there's like a schism, there's a separation, uh, there's uh, people at the community electing uh, members of the commission, commissioners, but they don't, they're not accountable to parents. I even heard some uh, commissioners uh, saying that they don't want to be accountable to parents because they want to keep their independence. But I don't know any type of uh, governance system where the government is not accountable to their electors. And this would remediate this system, and I'm sure it would be uh, increasing the participation rate in election, because those who are the most interested in the education would be uh, asked to vote and select their representatives. Well, I'm glad you mentioned that, because, Laura, you covered the last elections, and voter turnout was not good. No, I mean, as we know, the average turnout in the province was about 5%. It was slightly higher for the English boards at around 20%. So how do we support this bill, then, when we see that voter turnout is so low? Well, I can tell you, in the English sector, the participation was much higher. And the fact that they're discussing actually pairing the elections with municipal makes sense because they do it pretty much in the rest of Canada. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, just to address some of the issues that w were mentioned before also, the present act does work because some of the English school boards are quite proof of that because their success rates are 88%. Um, I think the issue is school boards may not be respecting the present act. So, and the, the present proposal for the Bill 86 really has nothing to do with the success rate of students. So, I would suggest that they, you know, reevaluate and look at the uh, boards that do work and model a bill on that. So by present act, you're talking about the current system, which we're, we're looking at. We have the board up here, 11 commissioners, one chair elected, uh, four parent commissioners. Bill 86 is being reviewed right now, Joanne. If they come back with some changes, do you think you can work within that? Like, what changes would you like to see that could make Bill 86 work? In your well, opinion? the thing is, it doesn't address student success at all. So I really think that they need to reevaluate and sit down with school boards, uh, visit those that it, it functions quite well and their success rates are quite high, and see what they're doing and how they're doing it, and then build something for, from that. I'd like to get your perspective on that, Michelle, yeah. uh, about student success rates. Tell yeah. us we your We think opinion. that um, 
the proposal, the improved structure, governance structure, will, with having people from the school and the parents at the school board, would improve the student's success. There would be a chance for greater students' Why? success. How because so? the, um, the principals would have a committee of uh, allotment of resources, and they know what the needs are in the school, uh, what uh, uh, resources they need to improve success. They, their mind is geared towards success. It's, it is their job. And we feel that this would give them the tools, the tools for the school to have better success. And let me get back to the success rate. Uh, it, everybody uh, in the English sector, that's for sure, are higher than the French sector. But uh, in 19, like when we started to evaluate, we went to the PISA international uh, assist, uh, testing. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, we were uh, evaluating the success rate for five years. It went up to seven years on, or until the students were 19. So okay. without doing anything, everybody's success rate went up. And also within the time from the, we've been calculating success rate, there's been an increase in um, certification and diplomas for, for students who are having difficulties. So it's hard to judge w what really was improved. Uh, I would like to know what is the success rate for the five years the normal delay for high school diplomation and with the other rates being given instead of a general uh, number, which means anything. Have the school really improved? Right. Itself? Joe, I know you want to follow to up, yes. but we're just going to take a quick break. So let's just hold that thought. And right. Joe, you can come back and respond to what Michelle had to say. Of course, Bill 86, Michelle just wrapped up uh, in our last segment. And Joe, you wanted to talk a little bit about commissioners and responsibility of, of parents as well. Uh, let's hear your uh, counterpoint. I do. First of all, I just want to respond to the comment that Michelle made before. Uh, about a commissioner who said that they don't want to be accountable to parents. I really don't know what commissioner said that. Uh, commissioners are certainly accountable to parents. I ran a campaign not too long ago uh, in 2014 and where did we campaign? Of course we campaigned in the schools and even in the summer months in July and August I campaigned, uh, you know, I ran in uh, RDP, I campaigned at the RDP uh, Youth Center, I campaigned at the library, I campaigned at the arena, places where parents go, places where the kids go. Parents are the ones who mostly go and vote in these elections, let's be honest. So of course we're accountable to the parents. But I just want to say, because uh, one of the reasons this is, this is always mentioned is because of the participation rate and the turnout. Um, our turnout, as you know, is higher than it is in the French sector. But ju just take our school board, for example. The voter turnout was 21%, okay? Which was an increase from the last election, which was in 2007. Now. When you look at 21%, you might look at that and say, well, that isn't very high, and, and it isn't. Mm -hmm. But when we look at, for example, the parental structure and the way they get elected, they get elected through the general assemblies in their schools, which would be under Bill 86 the way that these parents who wind up on the council would be selected by. They would be selected by these, the members on, who sit on the uh, Central Parents Committee. And you have, we have some schools that have as many as 1,200 kids, so over 2,000 parents. And at the General Assembly, you get about 35 people showing up. So that's a very, very low percentage. So when we say that parents are going to be more involved, I don't think they're going to be more involved in that system. I think we're excluding a great amount of people who, who do go vote because you know a general election does get much more exposure, media time, uh, advertisements. Posters are put out in the public, so it gets that attention for people who may not get involved in the everyday, day-to-day -day, uh, functioning of a, of a school board and may not volunteer uh, all the time, but who are conscientious and will make that decision to go and vote and may not do that once Bill 86 well, is implemented. And Joe, you, you, you're talking about campaigning, and I want to get into the economics of this for a second because obviously having these elections costs money the commissioners such as yourselves you're both receiving a salary the government says this proposal will save 14 million dollars Joanne don't you think this 14 million could be put to better use well I think this whole system needs to be uh, reevaluated so everything could be put to better use for our children and for society in general and I don't know all about the economics, but I've heard the breakdowns, and it's really not as how it's being uh, portrayed that it's really that costly, these elections. Michelle, it seems to be another division between Anglophone and Francophone again. And Joe, you said you believe that this is going against the Anglophone community and that we, you, you would take it, that it's unconstitutional and undemocratic. How does it affect the Anglophone community exactly? 
Well, uh, how it affects the Anglophone community exactly is the Anglophone community, as you see by the voter turnout, tends to vote more in these elections because we are a smaller community. When you look at the you know, Francophone community at large in Quebec, you're talking about the majority of the people, millions and millions of, of, of people in the province. I think different sectors, different uh, uh, you know, areas, or in Montreal, boroughs with, with large Anglophone communities, there's more of that little uh, sense of, of belonging, that tight-knit sense of community. Okay, and, John, I want to stop you there, because Michelle, why does there have to be any divide? Can can the French and, and English communities not work together for a better system? Yes, yes. Um, there is an obvious uh, uh, difference in the voting rate in the English sector, but it's still not ideal. Um, I think there should be a, the same system on both sides, and we need to find a way to get people to come out and vote. And uh, since the beginning of the school boards, 1960s, it's been a, a problem. And there's been a suggestion for change. Uh, we, we were seven years without elections in a system that's supposed to be democratic. So we need to do something, and it's urgent, uh, because it's the legitimacy of the people who are elected that's put into play. In the last election, even in the English sector, f about almost 50% of the uh, people elected were uh, acclaimed, even if their voting rate was high. And I think we, can't, we cannot foresee what's going to happen with the changes. I suspect that if we do change and we go to this uh, type of system where parents are electing their representative, there's going to be a lot more people at the assembly, at general assembly. People are going to be more interested. And, and they're the ones who are uh, affected by the decision of the school board. Their children are in the school. Joe, let's get back to, because you are a lawyer, let's get back to the constitutional aspect of all this. Do you foresee, you were saying, perhaps a constitutional challenge? Why? Well, basically because it's going to take people like me and others, uh, and it would take away their right to vote. And, you know, the way we have, for example, the school tax, the way that system works, uh, we would essentially have a group of people who pay into the school tax, who do not have children, but they pay into the school tax and they would have no say in uh, who chooses the elected people on the council. They would have no say in uh, you know, electing directly or indirectly anybody that sits on that council. So they're basically have, we're going to have a form of taxation without representation where these people pay taxes and they don't elect anybody. There's no accountability to them. I, I just don't see how we can justify that in, in in a, in a democracy. I, I think the good news here is the fact that they are reviewing Bill 86. They've heard the voices from, from each side. They've heard a lot of the, the, the worry and concern, and they're reviewing it. So it's going to be interesting to continue to follow the story. We thank all three of you for joining thank us you here so today. Much. Hopefully thank we you can much. all sort of meet halfway at some point. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but we all are working together presently. Yeah. And, and we all yes. care about student success. Absolutely. Exactly. And and we're all on the same page all when it comes open to, to ideas success. to improve the system. Nobody absolutely. Nobody Nobody is shutting the door to that idea, and that's the important thing. Thanks again for all, all of you for coming. We really Thank appreciate you. it.